people are willing to literally break everything, destroy everything, just to preserve their honor. Oh, I can't go anymore. I'm not going. Yeah, but what do you mean you're not going? It's your it's it's your sister's wedding. It's your brother's uh, wedding. You have to go. No, I'm not going. No way. What? Why? Why not? They invited my other sister, and they know I don't talk to her. And how could they invite her? Because she's also his sister. Because she's also he's also our brother. What do you mean? They have to invite her. No, it's either me or her. Oh, so if it's not your way, then it's no way. And you're going to not go because they invited somebody you don't like and that they really can't not invite. Of course, sometimes there are certain things where certain things can happen. If there's an enemy or something, sure, and it's not a member of the family. But the reality is you're looking for honor here. You're not looking for what's right and wrong. You know that what you're asking for is not possible, but you're not going to go because they didn't give you the honor they gave it to somebody else at least from your perspective and many times these problems get worse and worse these problems get worse and worse needless to say this is very common in the business world one of the uh, one of the funniest strangest business stories i ever heard in my life was actually uh, about one of the richest men in the world today as far as money is concerned warren buffett Warren Buffett is known to be as a the most successful investor in, in recent history. And uh, he made a fortune, not just of money, but also consecutive uh, results in his investments over the last uh, several decades. But interestingly enough, the company that is the umbrella owner of all of his investments is called Berkshire Hathaway. And Berkshire Hathaway is a business that he bought, was the first business that he bought And if you ask him, what's the worst investment you ever made? It was that first one. That first one that's still around to this day that owns all of the successful investments. But that one, the actual business itself was a complete flop, complete disaster. It just survived long enough for him to do other things that saved that and everything else. Why is it such a terrible investment? Simple. He said, I didn't buy it because of a good business. I bought bought it because I got disrespected. They disrespected him, and therefore he, did, he wanted to become an investor in a company. They disrespected him. He ended up buying the entire company and letting go everybody there. So the, interestingly enough, that in the business world, many times you see very powerful businessmen make really stupid decisions. Why? Because somebody crossed them. Somebody disrespected them. And this is something that's very common, very common among people. It's very common among everybody to a certain extent. People love to be respected and hate to be disrespected. The question is, although that's all normal, that's all normal. You like to be respected. You uh, hate to be disrespected. That's normal. What's not normal is how far people are willing to take it. Oh, wait a minute. How could they talk to me that way? How they can pay him that way? How could they do that way? I'm here. I'm a veteran. I work harder. I work longer. I'm here for longer. And people have all of these conditions in their head that they assume that everybody else knows. They assume that the company knows that they have a longer tenure than the guy that works down the hall from them, and therefore they should get paid more. They assume that the boss knows how hard they really work and how hard it is for them to meet every single deadline. They assume that everybody knows that they had other offers that are better offers and so on. They assume all this, so the second that they don't get what they want, or better yet, somebody else in the company gets what they want, no, I'm disrespected, I'm out of here, I'm done, no talking, no showing up anymore, and they damaged the company that fed them for all of those years. And unfortunately, Rabotai uh, Karim, I've been, I've been young, I've been old, and I've seen this way too many times, of how people take certain things too, uh, too personal, And instead of simply trying to clarify something, instead of trying to fix something, what do they do? They spit on you in your face, the hand that fed them, the hand that that helped them. No, all of that doesn't matter because of that one time they felt disrespected, which really nine out of ten times, it could easily be clarified and it wasn't disrespect, just a misunderstanding. But nonetheless, this is because people yearn for honor yearn for honor to such an extent that they're willing to destroy the whole world over it 
the whole world over it their marriage over it their relationship with their kids over it their 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 employment over it their friendship over it everything over it why i got this i got disrespected i got disrespected the funniest thing in the world is when you see people that literally you don't even need to look at twice to know that there's not much to respect these people because of their life decisions but what do they demand first respect respect you respect me when you look at me why because you're nine feet tall and you have bigger muscles than me i have to respect you but that's what they demand that's what they demand they demand respect they don't really know what respect actually means but nonetheless they demand it oh why are you talking to me that way why are you disrespecting me or the best yet when you talk to certain people that don't have an extensive vocabulary and you simply speak to them normal english oh why are you using those big words why are you disrespecting me what are you talking about who disrespected you i'm speaking english it's not my fault you didn't get educated you didn't read a book in your life and you don't understand but nonetheless if you say that to them expect the right and possibly left to come at you so you have to figure out how to get out of that hole and dealing with different people will help you learn how different people view respect nonetheless everybody wants to be respected and everybody hates being disrespected it all depends on how far they want to take to take it some people are willing to destroy the whole world over it and literally murder somebody over it and some people are simply going to walk away more people the first rather than the latter unfortunately nonetheless here we have an example from the chazonish he says you have some people that their thing that makes them crazy is food or some type of lust for something physical other people have a lust for honor either way at times you will see that the character trait or the flaw in character trait is on not on equal footing it's not equal where you see on one end this common flaw that people have let's say such as the desire for food this guy doesn't care for food he in fact it seems like he doesn't eat on the other hand when it comes to respect when it comes to generosity when it comes to whatever else that's uh that's something he is crazy on that thing he's strong there he's the worst person on earth does it make any sense because when he says it actually makes all the sense in the world why the reason for this does not lie in his essence and is not due to his original nature being in favor of only one trait but rather the fact that since this war is extremely difficult complete victory is not guaranteed he says first and fo- foremost you should know the fact that he's strong on one character trait and weak and weaker than most even on another should not uh, uh should not make you believe even for a moment that in his in his essence that who he really is is that he's really really strong on that one and weak on that one no 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 has nothing to do with that has nothing to do with that rather this is a very big war it's very difficult to win to overcome each character trait is very difficult so and he was born with certain things and rather in his lifelong struggle it's not a uh it's not a, a battle that you win in one week and you fixed all of your uh, uh desire for lust or, or honor and so on it's a lifelong struggle and this person has not yet reached a high level of achievement all he can do is withstand the easier tests and not the greater ones the tests themselves differ from person to person though the two people might be on the same age and on the same general level one may have a nature tending more towards anger than towards craving for food and therefore his refraining from delicacies precedes him precedes his being able to refrain from anger so he says the following something extraordinary literally going inside your mind and your heart and telling you who you really are the chazoni says that this whole battle of fixing ourselves as we already discussed last week of how it all depends on the willpower of a person where they stand if they decide to simply leave everything as is or fix everything without ever giving up meaning yes i know i'm flawed i know i have an issue but i'm gonna i'm never gonna give up on fixing myself and actually doing something about it not just saying it to yourself 
actually doing something about it. As soon as you catch yourself failing with something, you do tshuva, you fix it. I'm sorry, I have to fix it. And you never ever give up. You never ever give up. That's the best character trait. The worst character trait is simply giving up on fixing it.